Thank you for listening to the Starburns Audio Podcast Network. We have so many great comedy shows to add to your playlist. Just last week on Starburns Audio, on the season two premiere of Humans Who Make Games, Adam Conover talks to comedian Ron Funches and Jean Goudon, creative director of the Assassin's Creed series. On Boogie Monster, Cal Kinane and Dave Stone share a perfect recipe for the quarantined cook. This week on Profiles and Eccentricity, they cover the history of the Core Sean Unity cult, folks for whom a flat earth is ridiculous because they believe it's really a concave shell. Search Starburns Audio on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or any podcast platform for our full list of shows featuring hosts like Joe Coy, Amanda Seals, Jessica Chobot, and Jackie Johnson. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Starburns Audio. Enjoy the show. Stay safe, stay healthy, and keep laughing. Dan and Rand and Jay will share tales of folks so unaware they lack in grace and sometimes choose the life they choose will make the news. Breaking down each epic fail in Florida, there's half price bail, I'm happy to say they could so listen to our podcast jam with co-host Arm and Dan. Remember, don't be a jerk, cause when the music gets the funny hits, we are gonna take you down. Stick around, make a sound, hunger down, it's Dumb People Town. All right, everybody, welcome to Dumb People Town, another episode. We keep chugging along with great guests, and we're thrilled to have this guy on because, uh... I've said this to Randy before, you know, when when we met you, we were fans of yours already through Loveline. Adam Carolla, welcome to the show. Thank uh, you. Great to have you on. But one of the things Randy and I said was, it's amazing to us that you didn't start as a stand-up comic like way, 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 way back. Like you were in construction. You weren't doing comedy. Right. That is strange because your mind thinks like a stand-up comedian always. Your takes are well thought out just bits there they come out almost like fully formed it's like if you were to shit a mona lisa mm. like i didn't put this in i know you shit out fully fleshed out bits out of your mouth which is kind of amazing well thank you i've always sort of thought well, i should have a, a a grasp and an idea and like a motivation for what this is before i say it and so i don't know i guess there's a lot of people like i could remember when we used to sit around uh, Jimmy's writing table a million years ago, mm -hmm. and I was just in the writer's room, and I was sitting there once, and I was with uh, Bill Simmons, we know from the podcast, mm -hmm. and at some point he said to like somebody, like someone was pitching an idea, and he went, uh, "Nah, it's not funny. That's not funny. Mm -hmm. it's, it should be something else." And then everyone like sort of looked at him and said. What do you want to do, Bill? And he's like, I don't know, not that. And I thought, <laughs> you got to have your you own. Have an idea you got to have something that. chambered before yeah. you before raise you your, speak up before and you say raise no. your hand. And I've just always sort of felt that way and been that way. And I'm, and thank you. I'm, I'm flattered that you that you bring that up. But to be fair to Bill, it was something with Tom Brady. I can't remember what it was. Well, he was protecting. <laughs> what he, was he, he exactly. He was he was protecting a lie that we all know. No, but uh, I uh, I've. I've just thought your your job is to try to get it out, choose the verbiage, be succinct, and and do it in such a way where it's like, oh, that might be a, a finished product, even if you're improvising. Yep. But they're like bits, and I will say this: it's almost like you figured it out as you were doing your show. And I think what's interesting is that Dan Daniel Van Kirk hey. joining us. How Great you doing, to have bud? You, buddy? Uh, Dan, who is relatively new to stand up and been doing podcasts with us for a long time, came into stand up with a tremendous ability to take a story or something that happened to him and immediately break it down in a way that he would on the podcast. But on stage, it's like, yeah, it's a fully formed bit. This just happened. You, he'd like lose his computer at Midway Airport the day before. The you day know how uh, comics go? This happened to me yesterday. And you're like, right, that didn't bullshit. Did not happen. It would happen to him on the way to the gig. And suddenly he's got 29, a 29 minute story about it. That's I don't want to be a one upper, but I do a lot of jokes where I go, here's something that happened 
happen to me in the future. No, wait a minute. <laughs> so it wasn't that? even like my girlfriend broke up with me. No, she, she will, will, she she will, will break up. up. She will. And this break is up. why she will break up with me. Yeah. And there mm-hmm. you go. That's as fresh as the comedy comes. <laughs> it's fresher than it. to be able to predict the future is yeah. is great. How long have you been? How long have you been doing this? You, you were on Love Line for a decade. We just did your phenomenal podcast, The Adam Carolla Show. Thank you. Uh, you were on Love Line for about a decade, is that? Yes, that's and correct. And in that time, you know when someone calls up, just by the sound of their voice, your first thing is, who touched you? Yeah. Who touched you? Yeah, <laughs> who I mean, like, just, just the way they say hello, who touched yeah. you? Well, I, you know, you pick up so much in people's tone and cadence and attitude and it's so much more than you would get if you were in the room with those people yes. so you know people do this thing all the time where they go you never even met this person mm-hmm. how do you know or you haven't seen this person or you haven't looked them in the eye whatever it is and I go exactly I know a lot more because other things cloud other things mm-hmm. I mean when somebody mm-hmm. looks a certain way mm-hmm. sometimes good sometimes bad there's so many different directions you can go when you just hear their voice especially it's clear, it's clear. so you're sitting there in the middle the night in a windowless room and you have the headphones on and I would always just close my eyes Mm -hmm. and I would just listen to what their voice sounded like and after a while patterns start emerging like Angry people obviously sound angry, but you can do a thing where it's like, oh, gay, racist people sound racist. They, they don't do. have to be talking about race. No. There's just a certain sound that people start to have <laughs> for everything. Let me and, tell you another thing. And you're, you're like, like oh, right, you didn't here, even say here one Here comes thing. something about Mexicans. You know, like, yeah. And, and uh, another. Yeah. And even if I agree with those thoughts, I could still. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and. I went to the ground. Yes, you like to bump things up. Well, right? not only lazy, but. <laughs> <laughs> they all I know. So you, you would start <laughs> hearing things in people's voices. And then there are little things like the sort of angry female who was angry at her dad. And it was really easy because you'd go like, what do you do for a living? And they'd go, I work. Mm-hmm. And you go, oh, that's a super angry, mm-hmm. cunty, like mm-hmm. passive aggressive. Here it comes. And that wasn't I, the answer. Right. I am the dad in this relationship. You're now, getting it out. Yeah. And now playing. I'm getting what you're giving me, the super short, curt, whatever. Mm-hmm. And then you go like, uh, you know, and, and do, who do you work with? They go, I work with people. And you go like, OK, <laughs> she's fucking seething, uh-huh. angry. She's she's and mad. by the way, this is pure because she, I don't even know her. Right. And she's coming pissed, out at she's you. She's pissed at me coming yep. out of so you. what did your dad do to you and for how long <laughs> and yeah. did he use lube yeah those yeah. are all and my questions well i love that you are i feel like you're well versed in this area of being able to pinpoint exactly what is going on with a lot of anybody a lot of times dumb people doing dumb things and that is what this show is it's dumb people town we've arrived we're here with like i would say a dumb people expert yes adam carolla here and uh, i may have spoken to more and interviewed more dumb people than maybe other any, oh i'm sure you have i'm yeah. sure so, you have so then when dan who gets these stories sent to him through our wonderful fans listeners, and yeah. listeners they can send it to hashtag dumb people town hashtag dumb people town at daniel van kirk uh on twitter we then try and break down and figure out the the actions of who they are and so who better to break this down than the great adam carolla who's let's with us right now let's do it completely. shall we jump into a story let's, let's, do, let's do it uh lance hunter he hashtag dumb people town at Lance Hunter, I, what to me sounds like I, someone who actually hunts Lance with or, a lance or not a gun. Yeah, he's got looking a, got for lances. Little, got a gay bar kind of theme to it. The too. Lance Hunter. <laughs> I'll see you down, Lance. Hunter. Hey, are there any windows at the Lance Hunter? No, no it just uh, smells a lot like hold cologne. On. There's one in between the two stalls. Oh, that's it's right. not very it's tall. It's about waist high. Porthole. <laughs> Don't take a knee though. It's Lance you Hunter. Unless you, w- at Retina. unless you want to take. Unless that's what you you're want. into. Right. That's why you're at the Lance. I'll see you down. See you down at the Lance Hunter. It's a gay TV show spun off of the classic. Early '90s, late '80s TV show Hunter. Yeah, remember oh, Hunter? Fred Dreyer. Fred Dreyer. <laughs> Just walking around punching people. Yeah, remember? <laughs> but what? He had no qualifications. Was he an ex-cop? Are you a cop? Are you no. a detective? Are you any? Nope. Just walk. Former I, NFL. Well, player. he opens up his wallet and it's just nothing, and then he just punches you. Yeah. Well, he played by his own rules, which was there's a lot of that <laughs> going on, and he did a lot for 
Like male pa- male pattern baldness on top. Oh, sure, oh, yeah. Well, because he was simultaneously balding with also big, thick head of hair at the same. Yeah. He was like <laughs> at the same time. Yeah, he was a you don't de- know what's defensive winning. ant and for the uh, Los Angeles, Angeles Rams, Rams. overshadowed by uh, Jim Youngblood. Mm-hmm. And how about the fact that the inside linebacker was named Jack Youngblood on the same team? What about for Joel all Youngblood? Those years? Wasn't Joel Youngblood a guy there too? I don't know. Jack and Jim both played on defense. Mm -hmm. They weren't related. Their last name was Youngblood, (laughs) and you couldn't have solved it by putting a J in front of either one of their names. To me, it's like confusion. It's like the restaurant. It's like the uh, supermarket chains in Los Angeles, Vaughn's and John's. John's. We've always said this about John's. Vaughn's pretty good, decent, good. Mm -hmm. John's way lower rent. Also, how. How lazy do you have to be? Because they take that piece of lucite, and it, the other, the O and the N and the S is all sunblasted, sure. and, and then they put out. a little triangle to make you think it looks like a V. They want right. you walking in there, and it feels like it's a Vons yeah. until you get inside, and you're like, "How the fuck did I get inside the Grand Bazaar in Istanbul?" Yeah, and you're like, it's "Holy crazy. shit, was that? I, that was a bat that just flew." Also, at me? it's fun to go to bad markets because you're like. You eat that part of the pig? Sure. Yeah. 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 Snouts and feet, man. Yeah, and you're like, what? It's what? funny. I, I didn't realize Mr. T had a line of salad dressings. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Suddenly. They're very good. Have that. So yeah, look at his 700 Island. Shaq, that looks amazing. Shaq spread out into the baby food. <laughs> I didn't know that. It's got. Uh, it's probably not even a bit. It's got pineapple baby food. That's awesome. <laughs> well, yeah. Lance Hunter sent this one, and he said. The part that makes this perfect in his tweet: the the dumbest people in this story are the ones who didn't move. Okay, okay. <laughs> all right, That's great. Go by it. Beautiful setup. Jason McFadden was at work one morning in late January when he got a text message from his wife Cassie. "Quote: What the crap do I do?" It read. Okay, that this is, is almost somebody... this is almost too much backstory in an article really? about something. Oh, no, no, no. But you I... get a text from your wife: "What the what the your girlfriend? What the crap do I do?" That right. means it's That's she's it. partly blaming this problem on you. Right. Right? Like, she's look mad. at what I have to deal with. She, now, you tell me what to do since you're not here to deal with it. Mm-hmm. The text was followed by a picture of a rattlesnake inside a toilet in their Texas home. Oh, I heard about this one. Well, if you live in Texas, you should expect to have a rattlesnake in your toilet at least once. Yeah. I, that's the, I, I that agree. is the price of living you're in You're going to go to a football game on a Friday night and you're going to have a rattlesnake on your, your asshole. Adam, it, you've done so much like yes, work plumbing and, work. Yes, yes. And work with contractors. You had sure. a great show. Thank you. Yes. How does a snake where has the piping faltered that a snake gets inside? Well, let me explain how these things work. And first off, <laughs> That's why. It, so I'll explain how a toilet works. I'll explain how a drain works. A sink works, and a and a trap works. Like mm-hmm. the reason the tub is different than the the toilet. But this why. If you're in Texas, you should also have a mongoose in your pantry. Because you just get Ricky Ticky Tabby to come in there and, and take it out. Just it, destroy you know what I mean? it. Yeah, that's preemptive. That's just, yeah. Yeah. So the, the toilet, so what, what you have is a trap, and that's that U shaped thing yes. that's underneath your sink, right? right? And the reason you have that U shaped thing that's underneath your sink is that's where water sits. So when you run your sink, the water goes down the sink and it goes around and out, but a certain certain amount just settles in that U. Yeah. So if you picture the U, the last you know four inches is filled with water. Well, that creates a vapor lock so that the gases that are in the septic system don't go back up mm. into the pipe mm-hmm. and go in and bleed through your sink. So your, or your house tr- doesn't smell like shit. Right. And so if you ever get into a situation where it's like you're walking in your entry hall and it's like, God, it smells bad in here. That's because no one used the sink. For three months, mm. and the water evaporated, great. and you I, lost I, your vapor barrier. You need the vapor lock. You need the vapor lock in there. Now, toilets have the trap built into them. Right. They don't have it underneath like your shower has it or like your sink has it. It's built into the actual toilet. You the, can see it in the molding sometimes, the side, yeah, right? Yeah. You yeah. see it on yeah. the side right. in the trap. And the thing is, is that's pretty defeatable for a snake, you know? <laughs> <laughs> pretty much its shape. It's pretty much its shape. Yeah. It's right. Listen, the thing you use to unclog your toilet is called oh, a snake. snake. <laughs> Why wouldn't there not be a snake there? You should be surprised every time you look in the toilet there's there not a snake. snake. Yeah. There should be well, a snake. Quote, like everybody else, Jason McFadden said, my jaw dropped. Mm-hmm. The snake in the toilet 
toilet was initially discovered by the couple's young son, Isaac McFadden, four years old. Mm. Isaac only saw the head at first, then tried to flush it, said his father, and it kept coming up. The snake was like... <laughs> We've all had that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> In yeah. one way or another. You just, yeah. You've already washed your hands. You're just standing there waiting to flush again. <laughs> How come a snake or any other predatory animal never hurts a kid as long as the kid doesn't know it's in danger? <laughs> right. Yeah, right. Every single movie, there's like a, a gorilla or a baboon or something. He's like petting it. Yeah. Nice fluffy yeah. pillow. Because if the kid's nice dumb pillow. enough, they become friends. <laughs> yeah, they sleep on them and they tug their ear. And then the second you walk in in your bathroom and start yeah. screaming, that's when it pounces. That's what happened at the Cincinnati Zoo. If everybody would have been cool, this kid yeah. would have been fine. Right. 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 It's like Wiley Coyote out. when he runs off a cliff. Yeah. Only when he Falls, looks down, he, realizes, he really has to it. look down. He has to say yikes. Right. And then, then he, goes. he goes down. Yeah. If he just stayed in a suspended state of I'm still on the cliff. Right. He's It'd fine. He'll be up to right. steps back. And, and that's good. what kids are constantly in with wild animals. They yeah. do that when they're hurt, too, right? You guys all have kids, I sure. But you say to a kid, you're fine. Nine times out of ten, they will be fine. Yeah. You say right. you're, you are horribly injured, my favorite, all of a sudden they're horribly my, injured. My favorite thing to they say to kids. They like syndrome with hurt, and that's exactly how we work yeah. in our house. Look, yes. when I see something happen bad to my kids, I'm like, I saw that. Doesn't right. mean it's good or bad. It just yeah. means I... It's yep. kind of like one of those confusing things that they don't know that they then have to figure out, and right. then they're kind of like beyond it. Right. I saw that. Because they are coming up with a little bit of like, did you see what just happened to me? I, I saw, saw it. it. We vlogged it. I, I saw it. it. So Isaac, the four-year-old, repeatedly in the bathroom trying to flush a rattlesnake down mm -hmm. the toilet. Mm -hmm. He told his mother, said Jason McFadden, who was a little skeptical, because we have stuffed animals, snakes, and toys, she said. You know, kids, they do stuff. Which means she either, A, doesn't believe that there's a snake in this toilet, or B, cares so little about their plumbing that if he's just trying to flush one of his stuffed animals down the toilet, that's just fine. Let him let do it. Go. We don't care. Kids, they do stuff. They'll right. flush I anything mean, down there. Yeah. We, uh, you know, first off, I, I put a pox on my sister because we're so goddamn stupid. My sister, you know, it is true. They have these snakes. They look like snakes. Mm -hmm. They move. They feel. They whatever. Why wouldn't they be a snake? And especially to a three-year-old. Mm -hmm. When my kids, they're 10 now. They're twins. When my kids were like three two, three years old, my sister bought him like this 148 piece Mr. Supermarket swap set yes. yep. where it's like, oh, you got a shopping cart, you got your carrots, mm -hmm. you got your produce, mm -hmm. you got your broccoli, you got your everything. So it's this big thing. It's made in China. It's covered with SARS and lead paint. <laughs> of course. And what's Quality. in it is carrots, miniature carrots, miniature broccoli, mm -hmm. spinach, apples, yep. cherries, everything. I know it. Except for it's all made out of wood or whatever. And plastic painted that'll, by that'll, two year olds. That'll kill you. Right? Right? Yes. So you go down, you eat dinner in your kitchen, and there they have the carrots and the cauliflower mm -hmm. and the and the and the celery and everything. And you're arguing with them. Come on, eat it, eat it. Eat, uh, come on, eat you it. Just you're, put you're, one you're in your mouth. It, just put, put it, one yeah, in your you're mouth. You're picking it up. Uh -huh. You're taking a bite. You're giving them a bite later. Later on, you go up to the bedroom. They're playing in the in their room. You come walking in. They're now gnawing on a carrot, <laughs> and you slap it <laughs> out of there. Get that out of your mouth. What Get are you doing? What are you doing? Mouth. Come on. That's you want to choke? That's how you break a hostage. What? <laughs> what the fuck kind of I, message is this? <laughs> now look, those candy cigarettes are illegal, right? Yes, right, I remember. Right, because them. we don't want to. You spend the beginning part of your day begging them to eat this stuff. Mm -hmm. Then you spend the evening slapping the shit out of their mouth because they're, they're eating a thing that looks exactly the same. They're three years old. Yeah. Is this no the clue. worst gift you yeah. could ever get a human being? So Same with the snake. Name Same with the snake. With the snake. Yeah, so right. she's like, I, I thought it was a toy, so that's fine. Kids do stuff. Very attentive mother. When another son yelled out about it, this time more alarm in his voice, because she didn't trust the four-year-old, mm -hmm. McFadden said he knew his, his wife knew something was wrong. Mm -hmm. McFadden said he recognized the snake as a threat and told his wife to kill it. She grabbed a broom, he said, in an attempt to block it in the toilet, the snake, which had first been spotted by the couple's young son, as I said, pushed its way out and slithered onto the floor. They say what happens next in wow. like a garden hoe, a shovel, branch cutters. This seems like overkill for a wow. snake. How yeah. many times did you try and fail? Oh, my God. Yeah. But that thing, okay, you got a broom and you're trying to keep it in the toilet. And I it shut comes the out. door to the bathroom and leave the house. Yeah. Right. Why? No, but you don't want it. Then what if it's in your house somewhere? 
Well, you got to keep gonna it go? in the bathroom. Keep it in the bathroom. Well, he shut said the shut the door, but shut we don't door. know how much yeah. swing Spaces. is under that door. Yeah, that's right. Undercut too yeah. much. Like if they, I think I'd go coat hanger to like pick it up and out, like they do with like I, little, like I, I only have the wooden ones. So oh, kinda, fair enough. Fair enough. Kind of rich. Uh, <laughs> that's yeah. true. It's, that's it's, you know, it's too rich for they my. They smell blood. of cedar. No, so the deal. The deal is is this. First off, there is no item that is used specifically to kill a snake. It's always like, I used a backhoe, right. I used a garden a hoe, I used a wooden a wheel, yeah. I used a tire iron, I used some, wood chipper. I used right. wood chipper. Like, there's no one mm-hmm. item that's just used to kill a snake snakes. Killer, because it would yeah. be called the snake killer. Yeah, the number one thing is a shovel, mm-hmm. yep. evidently. But... Um, also, I agree. Like, I'm, I'm of the mindset to just shut the door and maybe move and not tell my family. <laughs> this, this, hey, kids, this life is over. Like, We're done with this like, life now. Like the Oakwoods up here, yeah, like some sure. executive thing. Yeah, just yeah. Tell, tell, tell my family, I just want to get my head Where did he go? Well, yeah, he left. Snake in the bathroom. You guys would have definitely left because McFadden went home to make sure everything was okay. When he returned to his job, he also went ahead and tracked down a local snake company or removal company to swing by their home. Because he can only use the phone at work? That's yeah. what he He's, that, go. That, he's out of minutes. <laughs> that, in a nutshell, is how the McFadden family discovered that there were more snakes around their home. No. A lot more snakes. Oh, my yeah. God. I'm going to ask you guys a little game that we like to play, little number games here on this show. How many snakes in total, including the one in the toilet, 24. did they find? 24. 20, you say 24? I'm going to say 12. 12 from Jason I'm going to say 400. 400. In total... 24 Western Diamondback Rattlesnakes. Get out of here. <laughs> Heard the story. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. But still, still not paying good. attention in three days ago. That's I mean, really that, yeah, you, re- you retained the it. Yes, 24 nice. Diamondbacks. They were located on the family's property, yeah. including the one in the toilet, so, uh, according to a Facebook post from Big Country Snake Removal. Mm-hmm. Right, feel free to sponsor this show. Yeah, Follow us on Facebook. 13. Who, who is going to follow Big Country Snake <laughs> Removal on Facebook? When you need them, you will. I just like what they post about. About, you yeah. know, like you I don't know. know. I feel the same way Supreme about like Court when justices. they come out with them. Like they show a movie trailer, and then yeah. they want you to go to their website. And I'm like, I just saw the trailer. Yeah, what yes. else am I going to do? Or on your a site? company like Mister Follow us, Mister Clean. Follow us on Instagram. Right. Yeah, follow yeah. You on Instagram. Why Clean Floors? No, I, I'm I'm with you. Like you you have a company where you make sponges. One is sponge, the other has a scouring side to it. It's I like, want to hear what you have on. to say about Ruth Bader Ginsburg. <laughs> right, I, I gotta go things. online. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I know what you do. Thirteen adult rattlesnakes were removed from a storm cellar at the McFadden home, according to the Facebook post. Another ten were removed from under the house. Oof. Five of the snakes at the property were babies. The family posts. The family in the post said they had no idea. Of course, they didn't. You know. have if you. You are a four-year-old snakes. kid. You are never going to sleep in that house ever again. Yeah. yeah. And I'm also, afraid. They win. That's the bad win. parenting. But it's also, <laughs> it's a one-upper kind of conversation at a cocktail, you know, because you, you get into that person. Can't like beat them. We had cockroaches. <laughs> uh-huh. They were all over the mm-hmm. kitchen. Sure. Yeah. And then someone else will chime in and like... We had a mouse infestation. Oh. How many mice did you have? Well, we saw three. You saw oh, three. Wow. But if you see three, three that there's must have five. Been rough. Yeah. That must there's have been five. rough for you guys. It feels like a lot. Yeah. And then yeah. you just lean back and like, anybody else have any other? Oh. Oh. Silverfish. Oh. oh. You guys oh. ever have any other? I mean, they're not harmful, no, but, but obviously just nobody annoying. wants Impossible to, to kill. look yeah. at them. Yeah. So, you know, I guess that's everybody. Well, actually, our koi pond got out. We had way more koi fish than we originally planned out to do this. Oh, what's that? What, what, oh, we had a barn owl uh, eat one of our koi. Ooh, that was so really that's kind of nature. Yeah. To How do you explain that to the kids? Yeah, so it's I don't terrifying. know Anybody? if you could do anything worse than that. We had 24 that. rattlesnakes, oh, one in what? our toilet. So I believe, uh-huh. I believe this dinner party is over. <laughs> people <Wow. sound. laughs> Just the sound of cars, Just doors people, closing, The and next sound is people getting their coats. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, we didn't open my wine. Can I just take it back? Yeah, Nobody really wanted it. Okay. Just take it. All right. Yeah, yeah. You're, yeah. you drop the bottle open. <laughs> corkscrew on the ground in the kitchen. Just walk, you hear the re- reverberation like they were doing a bad movie, even yes. though it couldn't make a noise like that, but she still exactly. does it anyway. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, yes. We'll get out of here on this. How is this possible? The Facebook stay. <laughs> well, it just happened. It's very surprising, Jason McFadden said of the discovery. Kind of gut wrenching a little bit just to know that that many snakes were living right under our feet and we didn't even know it literally. You walk into your boss. 
Now, we've all had jobs where we've worked regular jobs, regular offices, mm-hmm. whatever. You walk into your boss and you say, listen, my wife just found a rattlesnake in the toilet. What boss doesn't say, take the day off? Mm-hmm. I will we'll pay you for this day. Yeah. He had to come back to work. Yeah. Why? Unless you're a surgeon, you don't come back to work. I think he wanted to go back to work. <laughs> yeah, he was Honey, are we done? Us. Are we done now? <laughs> are Can we I good? go back to work? I came. I came home. There is that thing. And you guys like tell me, well, Sklar's, you know. And that you're married, you have kids, and your whole life is like, God, these kids, oh, they're always pulling us a thousand directions. They always want, they're pulling on mommy, they're pulling on daddy, everything. And then at some point, you find yourself alone in the house with your wife, and you're like, uh, I'm going to watch TV. <laughs> <laughs> I know all we do is complain about not having this, yeah, but, but I am kind of used to going where I'm going and yeah. closing the door and watching TV. But now this is kind of awkward. This is we, we, I, we I either should, have to have sex or one of us like, has to die. I should be drawing you yeah. a bubble bath, right. but I, I we're just here. Yeah, we're wasting this. I don't time. know what to Let's do. Let's just do our own thing. Let's just uh, go to our separate parts. You guys of are the like, house. Yeah. like the date scene from Batman when they're in the room. Like, I've actually never been in this room before, and right. they don't even know how to like interact at a table. Yeah. yeah. My kids are, they went to a Valley Forge in Pennsylvania for like six days. And my wife and I are just left alone with our own thoughts now. That's, you are you are prepared for that, <laughs> and we don't know what to do. Like more eye contact in the kitchen, yeah. or not sure what how we're supposed to handle this. You start fixing everything in the house. You start working on stuff, stuff that's yeah. not even broken. Yeah, let me let me just. Let me just be I safe. just want to rescrew in the light bulbs. Is that okay, honey? Yeah, I, I it, it's it's weird because you do have this thing where it's like you you feel like you're I, I think it's a lot like when the uh, daughter is reunited with her biological mom and they're just standing on the porch mm-hmm. and it's like I've been thinking about this for 31 years mm-hmm. Yeah, here we are. Here we are. <laughs> after the hug, it's it's just just everything after the it's hug. Like, it's a big porch. All right, I'm gonna go watch TV. That's right. <laughs> like, I don't I'm know. Go watch to do. TV with Corolla. That's what it is. All right, let's take a break, guys. Yeah. That's first segment in the books. Adam Corolla here with us on Dumb People Town, and of course, he knows exactly how to zero in with Daniel Van Kirk. We are the Sklar Brothers. Stick around. More Dumb People Town right after this. Stick around. Make a sound. There's more Dumb People Town. It's a trying time that challenges all of our basic assumptions. However, one thing that brings us all together is our common humanity. Now, more than ever, teams must come together and work together to solve big challenges. And Trello is here to help. Trello, part of Atlassian's collaborative suite, is an app with an easy-to-understand visual format. Plus, tons of features that make working with your team functional and just plain fun. Teams of all shapes and sizes and companies like Google, Fender, and even Costco all use Trello to collaborate and get work done. With Trello, you can work with your team wherever you are, whether it's at home or in an office. No matter what device you're using, computer, tablet, or phone, Trello syncs across all of them, so you can stay up to date on all the things your team cares about. Keep your workflow going from wherever you are with Trello. Try Trello for free and learn more at Trello.com. That's T-R-E-L-L-O dot com. Trello dot com. All right, everybody. Back. Welcome back to Dumb People Town. Uh, please, uh, if you're not following uh, us on Twitter, we're at Sklar Brothers. He's at Daniel Van Kirk. Adam Carolla is at Adam Carolla. Go listen to his podcasts, his hilarious, all the stuff that he's got going on. Uh, the Adam, live. Adam Carolla Show live stuff. Where can they find all your dates and all that you stuff? You just go to adamcarolla.com. And you can do just it. find there the, it is. the books. The books. Adam, the do people thing. have access to the, uh, like, Super old episodes back when it was just you and another person having a conversation. We have, we just did our 2000th episode. Congrats. Wow. That's insane. And we also have a whole bunch of other motivational stuff, stuff I call Take a Knee. It's a sort of like one on one with interesting guys like Mel Brooks and stuff mm-hmm. like that. We yeah. talk all about their, their life and, and luminaries from the business world and stuff like that. And if you go to adamcrawl.com and you do the subscription for like two ninety nine a month, you, you have access to, to all, all the that. archives. Archives and then all the take and ease and all the live I, shows. I, I started listening back when it was you would just have those conversations. I'll never forget. I was home in Rochelle, Illinois, mm-hmm. listening to your episode with Joe Rogan, one of his first times on uh, when you started out the podcast. And Joe <laughs> told his theory about 
There's never been attacks on humans by killer whales since World War II because that's how pilots trained, by shooting killer whales in the Pacific Northwest. So Joe believes, and other people do as well, that they all communicated with each other and said that we are the higher species. So they The stopped. killer whales are? Yeah, so outside of captivity, they've stopped attacking humans because we used our fighter pilots to train by shooting them during World War II. Well, they don't attack unless they're at the uh, SeaWorld. I forgot about that as well. <laughs> That's unbelievable. <laughs> I, was, I, that, I was like I sitting there not high with you. having my mind blown. I like, would like, I think I like about uh, killer whales is they have that dorsal fin and it wilts when they're unhappy. Mm -hmm. And I'd like <laughs> one of those. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, I'd like just to walk around with my dorsal fin like flipped Down. over. People and, would like, know exactly how hey, to come at you. don't bother them. Yeah. Don't my, talk to them. My kids would be like, leave him alone. He's not taking to Knott's Berry Farm. Look at the dorsal fin. <laughs> He's obviously not, not having a good day. You just can't Give do it. Give space. My mom wants to talk to my wife. I'm like, the thing is down. Yeah. You can't talk to her. Somebody get fin. that guy coffee and a bagel. Look at that dorsal fin. And then leave him alone. And then just let him have Give it. Give him a yeah. coffee and the bagel and then walk away. Yeah. And also, we could have moments, too, where it's like, I do that move where I get up from my nap on a Saturday and my kids are eating in and out burger with my wife and they're all eating and Sonny played his basketball game and then they're all digging into a double-double. And I go like, oh... Did you buy one for me? And they go, no, no. we just picked it up. And you'd see my Dorsal fin, like, fin start, start, like, like slowly start, move over. <laughs> and then she'd be going, I'd be going, I'd be, because I keep a stiff upper lip, you know, I'd be like, it's no problem. But I'll just go ahead and mm, thaw out like mm -hmm. a shepherd's pie or something. And but you'd see the fin, but the going fin, down. the fin wouldn't lie. The fin, fin would betray the you. The fin wouldn't what lie. What did Rasheed Wallace always say? Fin, fin don't, don't lie. lie. The fin, fin don't, don't lie. don't lie. And I'd say, as I've said before, you know, I do pay for the burgers, <laughs> and I condone you paying an extra two dollars to get an extra one for me. And if we get stuck with one, then Sonny will eat it, or I'll eat it, and mm -hmm. the fin would just be sure. yep. just slopping, <laughs> slopping, down. flopping I love over. That you would have a blanket statement. Feel free to include me in the mo in my money that you use. <laughs> yes, I've done it many times. Where it's like it's a blanket you're statement. Going to In and Out. My Bring wife's always funny because she'll go like. I didn't know if you wanted a burger or not. Just it's like, bring well, it. first off, I it's, always, it's an in and out burger. It's all, I, I always want in and out. Room. For bring those who me don't an know. in and out burger if I'm in the process of eating an in and out oh, burger right. because I will have the other if one. If I got a job at in and out and you pulled in <laughs> and you order an extra one for me <laughs> to eat on my plate. I'm working there. Like, so this like, thing where it's like, I didn't know if you wanted an in and out. It's like, well, uh, it's, yes. first off, it's one in the afternoon. <laughs> yes. And yes, I'm not vegan. So no, right, I want it. an in and out burger. But at $2.00. 21 cents a piece and I'm rich feel free take the hit. to just grab an extra one and there will never be a scenario where I go what's this rogue Why burger did you doing here what <laughs> how dare you I was going to have strained peas what are we doing people we're never going to get this back in the cow come you on will, now you will not get in trouble it's not literally. a scenario there's there's a there, the one scenario doesn't exist right. of course there is the scenario of did you get me a hamburger? <laughs> All the time. And we never have to... All you're doing is waiting in line and then giving them the credit card that I pay for. It so how could this ever... It won't take but any that, longer. the dorsal fin would just Straight be real down. thing. But I would love it to go the other way. Did you... We bought you a burger. You know what? I'm good. I don't really need one. And the fin starts going up. And you're yeah. trying to act like you're not in the mood for a burger. And, and the fin you, goes other fin way. Fin don't lie. They know. Fin, fin don't, don't lie. lie. Right, you yeah. want to do another story? Let's do yeah. one, dude. Uh, sent in by Winona, at Winona underscore Rose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A substitute teacher. Already. <laughs> Already. <laughs> Already you possible. know how she... My, he or my, she my, without without you saying anything else, I'm like... Overextended his or her power. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Well, it's always too like really think about substitute teacher. Like, are you into kids? <laughs> kind of. I'm into no, like, like three days a week, maybe two. <laughs> right. Not every day. Not every. Not day. every. No, day. No, thing you're no, into no. is your in between jobs. <laughs> yeah. That's what you're into. Um, into other people's kids? Not. Not. I not mean, really. like, yeah, like maybe six times a month, maybe. Here's what I'm into <laughs> as a substitute teacher: disrespect. Yeah, because yeah, that, that's all like you get. That. Yeah, that's yeah. what you get. It's like the oh, same God. hours as a fireman, but like none of the hero worship no, or none. anything else. And w when I was a kid, if we knew there was a substitute, it was just game on. Like game that on. Was it. Lights out. Game a on. A substitute teacher in Oklahoma was arrested on indecent exposure charges Friday after doing a cartwheel in front of high school students while not wearing underwear. 
Man wow, or woman? That dude's a hero. <laughs> this is that dude, This is her. Oh, okay. Kind of attractive. She's yeah. kind of attractive. Mm-hmm. You, yeah, you would watch the cartwheel. Yeah, yeah. They're you high can't school. Not watch a cartwheel, especially uh, a spontaneous cartwheel. Although I, it's not like she sat there and put her feet up. Mm-hmm. She didn't Wide share open. and stone it. Right. Well, according, oh, or maybe she did. According she to did. police, Lacey Sponsler. Yeah. Sponsler. 34. Sponsor. Mm-hmm. That's a very lacy sponsor. 34. Yeah. 34 mm-hmm. seems old when you're in high school. We all know, like, 34 is yeah. pretty young. 34, pretty she's young. got plenty of bad decisions still. Right. To Exposed sure. herself to a choir class of juniors oh boy. at Pawhuska High School, about 50 miles north of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Lacey Ponsler. Was there a context for the cartwheel? Mm-hmm. Number one. Number two. I've had it happen, and I don't know if you guys, it must have happened with the Sklars, but I've done, I was just shooting like a promo thing for Spike the other day, and like I just pulled up, and you know, the wardrobe chicks were like, oh, we got you, we got these jeans, and we got these shirts, you try the jeans on, and they're like standing there, and I was like, I'm not wearing underwear. Like I, I realized, like I did not oh, put shit, underwear. Oh shit! I put underwear on. Like I'm naked, That's and happened. I got to go in the other room and close the door or whatever. But yeah. I don't always have a clear 100 percent understanding of right. whether or remembrance that you put it on. I put on like if I'm wearing sweatpants, like now I'll put on underpants. And if I wear jeans, I won't. And Free you balling. know, if I just spontaneously celebrate with a cartwheel, <laughs> that's kind of well, on whoever's around. You know, exactly. She was wearing a skirt. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. The police report alleged that the incident was caught on video on a female student's cell phone, which showed the teacher doing the cartwheel and, quote, exposing her bare buttocks. Origi- okay, so enough time for a kid to get out her cell phone. She announced to, the cartwheel. To, no, get to her photo app. Sure. Mm-hmm. You know, because that takes time. You guys want to yeah. see a cartwheel? Switch it to video. Who wants to see a cartwheel? No, I'm getting my phone out. Right. You have to keep going. You have to keep right. switching I it from photo con- to video. I want the cartwheel context because I feel like. Who's asking for it? She's in. She's in choir. This choir. Mm-hmm. They're right. doing maybe some choreographed thing. <laughs> Nothing is working physical. Working something out. Right. She's a huge Patriots fan. Uh-huh. Like huge. I don't know. Like I, th- the fact that the camera was out suggests that she was leading into oh, it. Oh, I'm going to do a cartwheel. No, you're not. Well, originally, sponsor denied having done the cartwheel, but upon being confronted with evidence of her doing it, Video. she changed her so story. You, and you know the she principle. Did not remember doing the deed, right? You know the Here's principle. Was like, story. did you do you? You didn't do a cartwheel. Like, no. how long did he let that go on? So, right. you, so you're just you, saying you didn't. So you're just did saying you, you, didn't, a cartwheel? you didn't do a cartwheel. Did you do a no, cartwheel? I no, I did not. No, I did not either. I, <laughs> uh, one time when I was working for uh, AMB Carpets, always better carpets or something. We're cleaning carpets. Yeah, the part where they have all the evidence and then just start asking random questions and yeah. you know what they're asking but all you can do is lie. Right. We were, we were cleaning the Russian tea room which was in the Beverly Center a million years ago mm-hmm. and they let they left us there all night to clean the carpets and then lock up and we were just having shots we got into the bar we are having shots and I went into the back and I found like the dessert freezer and there's like uh-huh. a class and yes. lady fingers yeah. and stuff. I was just 19, just shoving them in my Shoveling mouth. Shoveling sure. And then I guess one of the guys I was working with, Chris, was also somehow found that area and was shoveling stuff in his so Anyway, <laughs> the next day, I talked to my boss, Art, and he was like, how'd it go over at the Russian tea room? I was like, mm-hmm. good, good. Stars. It went really yeah. good. You guys really had, good. did all the work. You did a good time? Did, yeah, yeah, it was good. Uh, it was really good. Right, everything went on schedule? Perfect. And when, cleaned everything uh, up. Yeah, when you got out of there, we couldn't even tell you were there, I'm assuming, but when you left? No, it's good. It's good. <laughs> it's all good. And then he's like... So if I were to call them. He was like, did you eat anything? I was like... No, I mean, not, here's the part I like. I don't, not, not, I don't remember. Not mm-hmm. that I can recall. In my lifetime, because yeah, yeah I've eaten stuff that in night. my lifetime. The second he asks that specific of a question, you're clocking. Does he know? How right, much right, does he right. know? What does he know? How what does he know? know? Right. Does somebody talk? Mm-hmm. What's he know? What's he know? So I was like, I don't know. Maybe I don't think so. Like maybe I may have had a bite of something or something. <laughs> we were too busy cleaning the carpets, and he's like, Okay, so you sure? You sure you didn't have any like dessert? Did you mm-hmm. have any dessert? And I was like. I don't kind of remember. Maybe, no, maybe. Probably, like I had something with a pecan. I don't remember. <laughs> both, it's you like walking into a room with there's no lights on and you've never been in the room yeah, before. And, like, just, and I know slowly, he knows something. And I know. I, yep. What do I know? My buddy Chris, we both got drunk. <laughs> 
uh, because I left the bar open. Why? And so we got drunk, and my buddy Chris, unbeknownst to me, went into the, the cold storage room, and he found a case of, like, these eclairs, and he thought, we're going to take them. Mm-hmm. But we got to smuggle them out of here. So we stuffed them into the solution tank of the carpet cleaning machine. No. And because he was drunk, he forgot. And he so left them in there. So when we left the fucking van oh. overnight, Art, who's like cleaning out the machines, found a case of, you know. Stuff. You would have gotten away with it had he would not Would have gotten away it. with it. And Art knew he had a, car- a carpet cleaning machine with a case of eclairs <laughs> stuffed in a solution tank. But he wouldn't share that with me. Right. Mm-hmm. And I had no idea what Chris was up to. I knew I'd gone into the freezer and eaten some stuff. It's great. You yeah. can't write it any better no, than so that funny. you're dying for his mistake. That's you're on right. the vine. For this woman, sin. you know the principal was like, so you didn't you didn't do any didn't sort do of a car wheel or anything? Yeah. No. You were fine in class, didn't do anything. I mean, the kids right. seem to have a great class. Uh-huh. The female student also claimed Sponsler was talking about taking drugs and, quote, how she thought 14-year-old boys were just like men. The student mm-hmm. said the teacher announced she was not wearing underwear prior to performing the cartwheel. That's when the phone comes out. Wow. This is a woman laying the work down for having sex with one of these kids. Oh, yeah. This is like, we're going to have a relationship. Yeah. And she's picking them out in the choir. Mm-hmm. By the way, you're going to allow for her to do it a lot more than you are if it were a male teacher. Yeah, now it's it's a harmless little cartwheel. You're right. That's junior too. That's like 17 year old, 16, 17 year old kids. Yeah. Are they they're, they're one way, they saw a girl nah, they're drunk. one way away from being legal. One year away from being legal. Depends on the state. Well, you know, it's always sad and telling, like, when guys see this. And guys are like, you know, when you hear the story, like, the the teacher had sex with the 15-year-old. She had sex with three 15-year-old boys, and they did it in the same afternoon and went to her house, and they did it on a lounge chair by the pool. Mm-hmm. And, like, all the women are disgusted, and the guys are like, geez, ah, boy, what the hell is this world coming to? And then they show a picture of her, and she's hot. And then the guys are like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, see <laughs> yeah. That I can see. All right. So that's Look, cool. You're going to ask these boys who are in the throes of puberty, who are right. just literally, like, have at their sexual peak. At Right. Have all this ammunition that has to get unloaded. It's like right. it's like a rolled as Chapman in his garage. You got to yep. just fire that shit off somewhere. Right. You just fire it into your own garage. Mm-hmm. They that's what happens. You, and and if she's going to put herself out there like that, it is going to be very difficult for a fifteen year old boy to be like, or nope. Seven yeah. seven year old boy to be very like, difficult I, I for a fifteen year old boy to not say yes fast enough. Right. Yeah, right. I would make the ultimate uh, defense attorney for one of these. Teachers, because they always do these ones where they had these like two year affairs with the guys from mm-hmm. the time they're in the 10th grade to their senior year and blah, blah, blah. And they're like hot blondes and they're out of Florida and blah, 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 blah. And then at some point it ends up in court and the uh, prosecutor starts talking about irreparable damage and psychological damage. And this boy's going to need therapy for the rest of his life. And he's not going to trust women. He's not going to trust adults. And, all that. and I would say I'd let him wax on forever. And then I'd go, I got one question and one question only for the victim uh, of this crime. Uh, You're 19 now. Yes. This went on from 15 to 17. Yes. Since it stopped until now, have you ever beat off to it? Uh, yes. Yeah. Earlier today. <laughs> case, okay. Place closed. Walk, we're done. Yes, walk, I'll drop my briefcase. Done. Done. Walk, close up the briefcase and walk out. Anything you beat off to is not scarring no. and it's not a violent crime. Like, like if you own a liquor store and some thug comes in and strong arms you, you don't beat off no, you don't. to no. it. But well, you, some have, some people you have beat off to this multiple times. Mm. Thus, where's really the victim it's, in this you scenario? You can't claim that it's a victim thing. But and you know he had to have beat off to it hundreds of times. If he says a few, even if he says a few, yeah. Yeah. it's like add a it's couple like zeros. Andy right. Pettit. You really right. took steroids once? No, right. Add right. a couple. The zeros. most graphic part of the police report came at the end, where the where the student claims to have seen Sponsler's vagina open and close in the process of the cartwheel. All right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, like he was talking to her. Yeah. <laughs> open, I, and <laughs> open and close. <laughs> open and close. First of all, <laughs> why is <laughs> that's you're too close to the cartwheel? That's right. Any open and close, and I would say, as Serge, this is an open and closed case. Yeah, <laughs> this is an open and closed case, right? Yeah, here. it just sounds like the she Chief Wiggum's like she kid from Simpsons. I was, there was a vagina, and the vagina okay. looked at me, and it opened, and then it closed. <laughs> <laughs> Ralphie, yeah, Ralphie, <laughs> Mr. Wiggum. Can we stop dropping dimes on everybody? Yeah. Like, I, 
if I was a seventeen oh year old God. kid, I would have been like, guys, shut up. Nobody this needs is, to tell her. We, we need her to be a sub as every, much as possible. Every time. Every yes. time. That's I just, would be so mad at the people who like let it out. Don't take your phone out. Do uh, not take right. your phone out. There's no evidence. Sponsor explained that her beha- explained her behavior by saying she was quote just dancing with students and trying to be a cool teacher. By the way, that sounds worse than what she did. Yeah, it sounds way worse <laughs> yeah. than what she did. I just, agree. I was, if she would have said my, I opened and closed my vagina in front of them, I'd be like, okay, right. just dancing with yeah. the students, trying to be a cool, cool. To be a cool teacher. <laughs> it's not like much. she let a bird out of it or anything. She was just Open doing... and closed. <laughs> a baby That's not even how a cartwheel works. It. That's a, a little, horrible form. A tiny yeah. parakeet. Like a just... hummingbird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now the class has to take care of it. It becomes yeah. like the class pet. pet. Yeah. <laughs> they gotta name it. And they changed the choir name to the hummingbirds. Uh, yeah. Just a tiny flies out and that's the end of that one ah two stories down in the books the great Adam Carolla is with us on uh, Dumb People Town thank you guys for listening we'll be back with one more segment right after this stick around make a sound there's more Dumb People Town Hey there, Adam Conover here. Humans Who Make Games is my podcast where I sit down with the people who created some of your favorite video games and have the kind of long-form personal conversation we so rarely get to hear. We talk about how they got into the industry, what their favorite games were growing up, and what it's like working in the trenches of this century's greatest new art form. This season, we've got a whole batch of new interviews for you. I talked to Kim Swift from Portal, Alex Preston from Hyperlight Drifter, Anna McGill from Control, and Alex Beecham from the game Outer Wilds. Whether you love video games or you just love learning more about other artists' creative process, I can guarantee you're going to love this podcast. So, you can get season two of Humans Who Make Games wherever you get your podcasts. Take a listen. Everybody, welcome back to Dumb People Town. Final segment. We uh, should mention we're going to be in Cleveland. I know people are getting their tickets there at the Great Hilarities, March 9th through the 11th. Then we will be in uh, Portland. Portland, Oregon, the 23rd through 25th with Daniel Van Kirk nice. at Helium. At Helium, phenomenal comedy. I know you've been to Helium up there, yeah. in Portland. Great Beautiful. club up there. And then we'll be at the Moon Tower Comedy Festival in uh, April Austin. in Austin, Texas. That'll be a really 21st fun. and 22nd. I believe Dan will be there too. We're going to do a live Dumb People Town while we're there, and uh, we're doing gonna, shows and sets. It'll be Great. It's a yep. great festival. Really, really good time. And again, check out all of Adam's dates to see him live at adamcarolla.com. And uh, shall we jump to the sure. last story? The last story, and then we have a great guest coming at the end. That's right. Which uh, which we will keep as a surprise. Toad King, at The Toad King, sent it in. I hope that's his real name. It's like the the worst version of a Counting Crows song ever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I just saw this story I saw about this study, and I, I could not wait to hear what you guys thought of it. And then when it worked out that, Adam, you were going to be our guest, I know you will have an opinion. Mm-hmm. Masturbation breaks should become a new workplace trend, according to a new report. Absolutely. How yeah. much work do you get done in the minutes after a good masturbation? Oh, uh, the refractory period work is. I mean, that's how we landed <laughs> the man on the moon. Yeah, yeah. that's right. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to do this unless everybody calms down a little bit. There's a companion piece to hidden figures. <laughs> <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of figures were hidden there. <laughs> yeah, we got spanking and stalls. That's how we got those men safely to the moon and back. That's right. Taking a few minutes to de-stress and quote relieve tension while on the job could See, actually boost productivity and make employees. happy. Happier psychology professor Mark Sargent of Nottingham Trent University told Metro U. This is this is the kind of fact that like is why Norway is the happiest place to live yeah. because they have like jerk it breaks. Yeah. Whereas because we're a puritanical society based mm-hmm. on puritanical beliefs that don't no longer exist and no longer apply apply to the life the life that we lead that that is the reason why it's very difficult you, for us. I don't know if I need this to become a common part of every workplace. Because have you ever been 
I don't know, back in the day, renting something from Blockbuster or even at the grocery store when they're very busy and a manager starts to argue with someone about how they need to take their break? Yeah. Mm, I don't need to hear it be this. Yeah. I don't need it to hear this. Co- I have you, need, you jacked off. Have you jerked off today? Because before you come back and handle these people's produce, I you need, need you, you to go to just jerk please, off. Please, just right release now. the tension. We're going to get yeah. a, we're gonna get a penalty and then I got to pay you extra. I'm not doing it. So please go rub one out. By the way, think about. And and I want I don't want to get too macabre here, but like think about like mass murders and stuff like that. Sure. If they had just jerked off yeah. right before, yeah, instead of release the tension, instead of on the corpses, you yes. mean? Yes. 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 But do you want to know everyone no, I, you work with is jacked off? No, but I always think about like studies, and you know they always have they do these studies, and then they always get these groups and. I would like to be involved with like this study because like this guy's got to go like to the break room in the lab and they got to be like, what are you doing? I'm here for the sleep deprivation study. How's that go? It just sees how long you can ride an elliptical without sleeping yeah. before you die. Right. Oh, okay. What are you Sounds here for? Awful. I'm doing the beat off study. Oh, oh why yeah. did I get the beat off study? Yeah, I got to get back to work pretty <laughs> quick here. I just want to grab yeah. some Danish and uh, drink some Pedialyte. Well, don't touch everything. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I'm gonna. We have a banana because there's. Uh, I think. Uh, God. Just take them all. Just take them all. Just, just take, take them all. all. You've, oh, you've touched yeah, them. Just well, take them all. No, I just want. I need the Pedialyte <laughs> and the banana has uh, a lot of calcium and a, a potassium and a, the doctor says I'm losing a lot of that. So anyway, have fun with the sleep deprivation. Good luck on that elliptical one. thing. Thanks. Yeah. Also, later on, we're going to find out how cocaine affects masturbation. So that's going to be fun. Should be fun. Wow. Good. A lot of good variables. Not as yeah. fun as what you're doing. I really think you're doing God's work over there. So, Dr. Uh, Cliff Arnold, a psychologist and life coach, agreed with that assessment. Quote, I would expect a masturbation policy to result in more focus, less aggression, higher productivity, yes. and more smiling, Dr. Arnold told Metro UK. Certainly taking a masturbation break for boredom or an escape would increase work focus. Look, I think there's a moment where we all do what we do, and we're sitting here on these microphones or you're up standing in front of people and you think to yourself, I can't believe we get to do this. Having worked other jobs yourself, sure. having like put yourself in oh, like hard every labor situation. I, I just think about when I was a grave digger. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm like, I don't need to be doing yep. that anymore. I drove that monster truck for a while. So you know, mm-hmm. so I, life coach, does every life coach just have a moment where, like, I can't fucking believe I get paid for this? <laughs> yeah, got it. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's like, it's not even psychologist, psychologist, right. psychiatrist. It's you just go to confident school. advice. Life coach is just like, there is no way to test whether you're doing it right. There's no, no way to check yeah. whether you're, th- th- it to me is like a niche of, th- and they do well. Life coach. Yeah. Somebody complains, you get to come back with, I'm sorry, I'm your life coach, not your this year coach. So has it, has it ended yet? Let's take the long Let's look. Let's see how it goes. Let's take yeah. the long View. I couldn't be a good life coach. I feel like the information I would dispense would be good, but I'd constantly be telling people to take a lap. Like, <laughs> like they'd be like, hey, you're five minutes late to our life coach, coaching session. Yeah. And they'd be like, sorry, I ran it. Well, why don't you think about it while you're taking take a, a lap? lap. And while you're so out there, jerk lap. one. Just yeah, jerk by one. By the way, it. helmet's not out. a chair. Grab a knee. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to confused. I'd be wearing chair. bike shorts with two snaps on yeah. them in the front. <laughs> Clipboard tucked into the back. Like yeah. I'd, I'd take my coaching pretty seriously yeah, you know? that would be Coach. but i mean it just there has to be a moment i see that i remember watching that do you see that uh, metallica documentary like yeah monster or, yes. you know god the when life the psychologist life the coach. life the, that life coach for the band when yeah. that guy came in to kind of like really ease the tensions between head and he's like, and they're like what are you still doing here man he's like i was gonna go on tour and keep you guys going and they're like what we don't fucking need you anymore and by the way like your psychologist telling you it's cool even important and medicinal to beat off at work is like your nutritionist going oh fudge is fine yeah yeah, yeah. Fudge is nothing, <laughs> yes. nothing wrong with fudge. There. there's nothing wrong with fat got a know. bad rap yeah i got a bad rap <laughs> no right. help yourself oh really it's all <laughs> good <laughs> I was kind of guilty about it. No, no. by all means. By all means. The topic of work masturbation breaks come up in the wake of a survey by Guy Fee. I don't know how that's pronounced. Guy Descri- Fieri. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. that's who did it. He did it himself. Have you ever and met Guy Fieri? it that way You've for 62 him, years. No, I've never met him. I mean, let's roll out. I feel like I know him because he's so him. Just a bowling shirt him. with a goatee. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah. He's the personification on of it. Smash Mouth. Smash mouth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know. Uh, the topic of work masturbation breaks came up in the wake of Guy Fieri's dis- uh, study <laughs> survey, described as a masturbation pop-up booth. I guess they had one of these in New York that found that 40% of workers in New York already take such breaks while clocked in. Mm-hmm. I don't think I've ever jacked off at work. Look, this is also one of those moments where you well, need to make sure. Well, as a grave sure. digger, that would be really <laughs> disrespectful. <laughs> really? Like when the grieving family yeah. comes no. around, like, what's he doing? Oh, yeah. He's just releasing some tension. Why is he hunched I'm over? I'm trying to be more productive. That's that whole thing going to dig itself. Yeah. 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 She wouldn't have wanted it yeah. this way. Right. Hey, she died doing what she loved. Uh, <laughs> no, but this is one of those times where at She work, died doing what I love. If you're going to have a jerk-off policy, I think you need a bigger more emphatic wash your hands before you go back mm. into the workplace sign. Mm-hmm. Earlier yeah. polls by Time Out New York and Glamour respectively discovered that 39% of men said they masturbate at work while, let's, I'm going to ask you guys, what percentage of women Ooh, say they made some time at work for self-love? Is 39% for men. Well, if we're talking, 39 sub, for we, men we're talking substitute teachers here? Because yeah. that's a different <laughs> category of women well, who would do this. The thing about women, like, on one hand, they got, like, no muss, no fuss. Like, they got, like, a smokeless cigarette mm-hmm. between their legs. Yeah. Like, nobody's going to know <laughs> right. they got what's a lot happening. Of yeah, yep. it's, it's not like you walk back in and, uh, hey, Bob, yeah, one of your mittens is stuck to your shoulder. <laughs> like, oh, what? Right. Oh, this mitten? Yeah. You, know, oh. you get an appropriate place door jam, a girl can go to town. Yeah. Right. So they don't really take much. Also, now, I, you know what's always funny? When guys talk to women about masturbating, it's just so we can beat off to them beating off. Yes. Like, remember in <laughs> like high school, like, come on, yeah, yeah. Just, you know, it's natural. just say you did it's it. Totally natural. Come on, come tell come me on. about it. Yeah, like you're in a tub, like, and you light a candle first, or right? something, right? Like you, you just, just like, use the water. The like, it's cool, right? Like it's fine. Like we actually love masturbating so much that we want to talk to women so we can beat off mm-hmm. to about their stress. Yes. Yes. masturbating. And, and Jen Kirkman, great comedian, has just such great material about what she. needs needs like i need a whole so i was like i think you're old you what know. do you need to beat off to johnny depp and she's like, like no i why is he there why is he at my house what's the backstory i need this uh, and i need that oh. and the whole you know thing. how women women too are like they go like i had an orgasm like in my sleep it's like what happened i dreamt i made love to man who was it he didn't have a face it's like <laughs> what he doesn't need a face it's like, why no, no face no, no faces. Just listen you needed two ears just a faceless ear we're like linda carter right <laughs> she's riding a horse like, I, I got it it's laid out perfectly like <laughs> linda they didn't have a right. face you know I, it's a mystery no. i couldn't tell it was more of a presence than it was an actual man <laughs> we're like wouldn't you just beat off the dolph lundgren like no so. no this didn't have a face no, <laughs> it's too weird. I'm gonna say now you have to account for women. Thirty nine percent of men. So just right. keep that so number in you, the pocket. You gotta figure. You got. It's easier for women, right. and also uh, through doing love line. Like I found out that women can just have like orgasms like right on workout equipment and stuff yes. like that, just without you even knowing it. But this is self inflicted. Mm-hmm. And you would have to admit this to a researcher right. who was then going to go beat off to it later on the, <laughs> on his next break. Uh, when Johan right? takes his next yeah. break, he's going to squeeze Could one you off just to talk you. talk about it one more time into the camera? My camera wasn't right. Just yeah. need one quick, a little more detail. I'm going to say 11%. 11%. That, I agree. Randy is, Sklar. I think it's 7%. 7% yes, of women. I think they women. just don't admit. I think, why would they admit it to this? Okay. I'm going to go against the grain and say 46%. 46 the amount of percentage of women who admitted to making time for self-love while at work, 31%. Oh, wow. Yeah. Impressive. Progressive. Yeah. So wow. the next time I get in front of three and a half women, mm-hmm. I'm going to look. <laughs> one is beating off at work. I'm going to go like, no. no, no about it, yeah, Let's just I say know. you are. One Tell of me about you. It. You were gone from that meeting for an awfully long time. Statistically, one of you. Yeah. And by the way, if I wore a skirt, I'd probably beat off 11 times a day. Yes, like, me just, too. My hand would just wander Easier up. Yes. Do a car, you do a cartwheel while you do it? I would welcome bad traffic. Go to town. A bird flies out. Uh, And an article by Ravishly stated that workplace masturbation is the new smoke break. I doubt that. And called Mm -hmm. it a good way to boost output and creativity. Definitely boost output. I completely support that. And I I think like uh, the world would be a better, happier, calmer place. In a stall? 
You, yeah, in uh, a toilet, flush it away. No, family, well, family bath. That should be the new plot of Flushed Away Three. You're gonna have to teach our young boys like not to get into one of those positions where you have to be like sitting in a dental chair or something. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of guys yes. early on that get married to it's, a very vulnerable position. Right. This is and it's a grave. Once it, you, yes, yeah. it's like, hey, I'm gonna have a talk with my son. Like, let me tell you something. The position <laughs> don't get too and lube is a very, very wicked mistress. Yes. Like you, you may you're gonna have a love hate relationship with her. Pardon, pardon the phrase. It's a slippery slope. You will because you'll get married to Lube and then you'll be camping for three <laughs> and days. And it won't be there. This and is it will like not when, be there. This is like when you know in the Stanley Cup when team wins the Stanley Cup they do the dumbest tradition ever. They let everybody on the team have the cup for a little while for a, day. So, right. for a day or a couple of days in the year that the team has won. Yep. And that's look. Some guys can handle it. Other guys can't. Chris Draper. Of the Detroit Red, Red Wings. Wings. Let his, he was potty training his kid and let his kid <laughs> take a dump, take a dump in the cup. Now people drink from the cup. You right. know what I mean? And people sure. probably drank from it after that. Sure. However, forget about that. That's unclean and that's terrible. But you're potty training your kid. That's a terrible. I'm in the process right now. Same thing. That is a very difficult thing. What if the kid can only now shit on championship hardware? Mm-hmm. You got to become friends with the Williams sisters. Say, bring bring a couple of those Wimbledon bring the plates Wimbledon over. Plate over. Oh, My yeah. kid's got to go. Like I need. It, it is a you a dangerous area to put yourself. Same with the dental chair jerk off. Yeah, no, you got it. it you you you'll get married to that position where it's like, oh, I need my toes locked out and my calves bunched up, and it's like, no, no. I'm going to teach my kid to beat off while he's being chased by a bear. Right. Like, I want you to be able to just run off. Gr- growing up poor, running serpentine from cops. <laughs> and growing shooting up poor at you. helps you because yeah. you can eat anywhere, yeah. you can sleep anywhere, you can jerk, you can jerk right. off on anywhere. The run. You don't go up with right. options. Super important. Yeah, yeah. Super important. your kids. That yeah, someone see you like in the company head with a yoga mat like laid out and a candle lit and people walk stepping over you so you're going in to wash their hands and stuff. No way. No. Too much. Too because much. They, the second they see you pull out the yoga mat, there, we go. there, there we go. goes Jeff. Yep, he's taking a break. There goes Jeff. Oh, he's got a scented candle. He's Look at him. He's going to be a lot calmer oh, when he comes back. Here but comes I mean. the lube. Here it comes. He needs it for productivity. Uh, I love it. Oh, that's a great story. Alright, before we go, uh, Super Bowl just happened. Happened and uh, and of course the Patriots won and then we talked An about epic this, comeback. Fashion. We talked about this on Adam's show. We talked about the fact that there were some stolen items. Yeah, uh, Tom Brady's jersey, the football that was at the end of the game. The Texas State officials getting in on it. We actually have an inside scoop. We have an inside scoop with a guy who's close to uh, to the Patriots. Close I'm go to Tom let him Brady. in here. Let him in the door. Uh, he is he's a friend of the show. He's a big time movie star. Uh, Mark Wahlberg is joining us. Mark Wahlberg. Uh, wow, you did get Mark. We Wahlberg. got Mark Wahlberg in here. Uh, I thought this was a goof. Then, no, no, this is real. This is real. Uh, and we want some questions answered about this Super Bowl thing. Mark, how are you? How are you guys doing? You doing good? Yeah, yeah we're, we're doing, doing great. Really doing great. Man. great. It's, it's fucking nice great to see you. What's up, pro- Adam? How are you, man? Hey. I just want to thank you because we were at like the Beverly Hills Hotel yep. and I was eating lunch with like a couple of like heavy hitter radio guys mm-hmm. and Wahlberg was out there in the patio mm-hmm. and he just came by and said, hi, Adam. And like, like, Dude, I'm like a big I, fan, man. Well, I, I'm a fan too, but I just, it got me a lot of stock with the radio guy. Great. So, Happy great moment. Hey, I'm glad, I get you, back like I'm that. glad you remember that. He, he, does th- it he for, considers it giving back, but yeah. you know, I think the amount of stuff I Donnie. do for Donnie, that doesn't even compare. <laughs> oh, you know, right. And Donnie yeah. needs a lot of stuff done for him. Well, you were at the Super Bowl. I was at the Super Bowl. You left early, though. Did I? That's what Did I you mean, leave oh, Okay, see, that was the report is that he left early. Did I? I don't know. I'm asking you. Did you? Did they win that game? They, they did, did win the game, so I think you did stick around. Yeah. Did you hear about all this like, stolen memorabilia? Stolen memorabilia. They couldn't find the ball after the game, right? And they couldn't find Tom jersey. Brady's jersey. And everyone's saying it's an inside. It wasn't stolen, dude. Who's got it? Who's got it? I played fourth quarter as Brady. What? what? I just took the jersey home with me. You played the. Fourth- I'm the one who wore it. Down 19, going to the fourth quarter. I, did you see Invincible? You think I'm going to let it stand out there like that? No. no. What no, happened? Oh, it's true, because Brady was like a new person. Like a, a totally different person. I, he did person. look a little shorter. He did look a little shorter. Sure. Yeah, I, don't know I thought about it was that. just a pounding he took, but his guns were bigger. He was a yeah. little bit shorter. Yeah, dude. Kind of moved around better. I came out there. I took a troll. I went up to Bobby K. Uh-huh. And I go, Bobby K. Uh huh. Let me fix this shit right Bob now. Kraft. Wow, Bob yeah, Kraft. Yeah, the Bob white, white collar genius. Yeah. Yeah. And he said, go ahead. Yeah, dude. And Billy B was like, are you sure about this? I'm like, yes, Billy B. Bob Kraft's 
collar is whiter than most of his receivers. Right. <laughs> but it can never match the color of his shirt. Shirt's no. got to no. be blue. Yeah, collars and gotta cuffs. Got to be, gotta be white. Style. He's got good You style. like that style? Yeah, dude. So I came down and I stepped into the game. So I don't think a jersey's stolen if you wore it and won the game. So you took it? I took the jersey that I wore What are you going to do with it? The, the jersey and the ball? Oh, I, it's framed up in my house right now. Nice. Yeah. You're not going to hang it at a Wahlburgers? Uh, somebody will steal it. That's a good point. Yeah, that's yeah. all right. I, when you say somebody, you mean Donnie. If he needs the money bad enough. Yeah, so could you see him down at the local flea market? Yeah. Just like, think, Donnie, just get a good deal for it. <laughs> no. And, that's, and, and that is the thing. you got to watch. He when you got someone the in the family too. who's not up to the snuff, yeah. you, you gotta always got to watch. on that Jenny McCarthy, too. Oof. She's I mean, hurting look, about now, too. You she, know? she is hurting about now, and she could always, she could always be right in Donnie's ear. Take right. It. Just take it. Yeah, no, I don't trust her at all. Take don't it. I told her, too. I was like, you two keep this up. You're getting kicked out of the garage. They're living like oh, Mike Seaver in the garage. They're like Mike Seaver in growing pains. Wow. They're living oh, in your in garage? garage. Yeah, they're living above the yeah. garage. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. I, I didn't know. Chores. I didn't they know got their chore wheel. They're fucking good kids. <laughs> I did not know that. Mike Seaver had a friend called Boner. Yeah. 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 Boner Went to Marines. Went to Marines. Died. Oh. He died in the Marines? Yeah, I think in real life he killed himself. Uh, what? Yeah. Well, yeah. Exactly. Look, he can't. Should have worked out more. Yeah, yeah I know. Exactly. He should have worked out more. And that Cardio been cures thing. everything. Wow. Does it? Oh, you got a boxing ring in your backyard, yeah, right? Yeah, dude. I'd love to throw him up. You wow. throw out the gloves and just. Yeah, we got just, the whole deal set up at the gym. You guys should come out sometime. I would love to come. Have you, and you box. Yeah. So you know. I'd love to dude, see the Hammer, that. Great movie, man. Oh, thanks. Seriously, Maybe I'm telling like you, you. You do like real movies where you're like an athlete who goes and like overcomes shit. I do that all the time in my daily life, and sometimes we film it. Jay, how much did you. I know. I gotta make movies out I know, Jay. How much did you cry at Deepwater Horizon? I cried like a baby. On a plane. On a plane. Because he recently plane. watched it. Cry like a baby. That was all real. That was real? Yeah. That actually had. I know that. They actually. spilled it again. They, they spilled the other again. I want this authentic. And Peter B was like, let's do this. Pete Berg, man. <sighs> that guy's out of control. Yeah, that guy is BP out of signed on to just spilling all that shit again. Oil? They don't give a shit. They, they really don't. Really give a don't. Give a shit. Shit. BP the does goes not down give a shit. The demand goes up. But let me ask you this. Yeah, that's a good point. Do you guys see Patriots Day? Yeah. No. Oh, what? No, no, I haven't seen it. What? No, I haven't seen it. We all heard it. I thought it was about Tom Brady. I didn't know. We like. Everyone heard it was good and then decided we didn't want to see it. Yeah. That's one of those that are like, all right, did you see Patriots Day? I no, heard it was no, good. No, it was good. good. It was good. It was good. Yeah, you yeah. should go see it. Are you going to see it? No. no I just what? keep hearing it's good. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> it's, all, it's all this. Definitely go There's see no it, guys. There's no pizza version of that. Three people <laughs> saying it. Have you tried meatball? No, I heard it was great. Never going to try it. <laughs> <laughs> Never going to try it. Well, you should. Well, there's really no opportunity for me to try it. Well, you're in luck because we're making another Daddy's Home too with me and, fr- me and Will. Oh, really? Yeah. So you can come oh, check out. Oh, my love that, man. Daddy's back home. Yeah, dude. It's going to be really good. I believe it's going to be good. All right, listen. You get that jersey. You frame it up. I say, yeah, hey, what do I have to do? I'm the one who won the goddamn game. That's you right. Everybody thinks I left. Page, no, I took over. Tom, this you, makes so much more sense now. It, exactly. In I'm retrospect. I'm glad we football. finally have the uh, the end of the, the story here. Greatest thing that ever happened. You put me involved, greatest thing ever happened. True. Look at Boogie Nights. That's All the right. only movie Paul Thomas Anderson's made that anybody wants to watch. Well, I think he did some others, but. Do you? Well, yeah. Transformers. Will be blood? Could oh. LaBeouf do it? No. LaBeouf could not do it. No, Couldn't Shia LaBeouf got out. Now who's running the show? You are. Yeah. Yeah. We even put the old dude from Westworld in the next one. That's <laughs> wow. That's, you know the robot guy that killed Jodie Foster? Yeah, Tom Hankley Jr. No, the dude. <laughs> He's, He's like a little Westworld the robot right now. Guy? For no, Jodie Foster. He killed Jodie Foster like in 1991. Oh. The old? Are you talking about? Uh, oh, uh, uh, oh wait some a documentary about about serial killers. S- safe room. Yeah, Donnie was in. S- Donnie was in Safe Room. No, he wasn't. He, he was, was not a glorified background actor. He yeah, was an he extra. Was he, does, extra. he actually isn't even credited. He had, he had dialogue. Hey, and you're gonna tell me you like Six Sense too? I don't know. He had dialogue <laughs> in <Okay>. Safe Room. <laughs> yeah. That's all I'm saying. Whenever he acts like Six Sense is great. I'm like Donnie stood in a bathroom and cried because he couldn't eat enough. That happens every fucking Wednesday. I mean, that was a craft service issue. Yeah, makes sense. All right, Mark Wahlberg. Thank you. Yes. What's the rest of your day? Like do push-ups nude on a cliff? Is yeah, that what happens? I've got, okay. I'm doing two 11Ks. Oh, wow. And mm-hmm. then uh, probably do my nighttime workout, hit mm-hmm. a little protein shake, mm-hmm. uh, make sure Donnie's all tucked in for bed, read him a story, and hit the hay. I love nice. it. It's a great day. I'll That's see you at the brother. Beverly Hills Hotel, man. Dude, give me a heads up when you're in there. Right? Yeah. He'll be tanning himself. Yeah, right, I'm gonna it. go pick a fight. All right, Mark Wahlberg. Wahlberg oh, with wow. us. Oh my God, that was send, was... send Van Kirk back in here, please. He's Appreciate on his way back in. Right, Jeez. Guys. Well, that's a show, guys. There you that go. was a show. Beautiful a show. job. Snakes in the house. Cartwheels for the substitute teacher. Yeah, and, and the jerk great off and the jerk off breaks <laughs> at work. Uh, Adam Carolla, thank you so much again, Adam Carolla. Listen to the Adam Carolla show if you're not already. Subscribe, listen to it, rate it, review it, all that stuff. Do the same for this show, Dumb People Town. It's actually doing quite nicely in the uh, in the old charts and whatnot. 
Uh, yeah. Thanks to you guys. Rate it, review it, subscribe. That's how we keep it up there. And uh, tell a couple friends about it. And uh, go see Adam when he's live. And go see us when we're live. Thanks so much, guys. We'll see you next week. Thank you. Dum, dum, dum.